Hello everyone. Today I'm going to give you a small product overview of Redox GPS. GPS stands for Grid Prototyping System. It's a power grid prototyping system for SOC designs. It is a power noise reliability aware PDN prototyping tool. It provides a framework for doing intelligent design dependent PDNs by creation. It can do power grid optimization for various power noise reliability aspects such as power grid metal density planning, bump placement planning, switch planning, LDO planning and so on. Let's take a look at the Redox GPS flow. The PDN prototyping will happen inside GPS. Even if users don't have a flow plan dev available, they can create a black box level flow plan inside GPS, following which they can create the power grid prototype. Once the power grid prototype is ready, they can go for power estimation assignment. Once everything's ready, Redox will be launched for analysis purpose. And once Redox results are available, you can do all kinds of PDN optimization like metal density optimization, bump placement optimization, etc. inside GPS. So this is a cyclic process which can be used to improve your PDN network. We will have a small GPS tutorial session which will take you through the steps which are listed below. Let's learn how to build a flow plan from scratch. The GPS tool is invoked by redhawk minus GPS command on your Unix terminal. We will read in the technology lives and other essential inputs by sourcing a tickle file now. You can see that the library is currently populated. Our intention is to create a new cell. So we do right click and click on new cell. Let's name the new cell as top and click on apply. It creates a new session for the cell known as the parent session P. Right click on the parent session and click open. It will open the GPS GUI. To define the flow plan of the new cell, go to define flow plan size. Let's give width as 1000 microns and height also as 1000 microns and click OK. The new flow plan is created. Let's learn how to draw some blocks or regions in the design. To draw a region, go to flow plan, draw region option. Let's try to draw a region in the upper left part of the design. Let's name the region as R1. Let's put the LLX as 100, LLY as 600, width as 300 and height as 300 microns. Click on OK. The region will be created. Similarly, let's create a region R2 in lower right part of the design also. Now we will learn to draw some routing blockages in the design. To create a routing blockage, go to flow plan, draw routing blockage option. Let's try to create a routing blockage in lower left part of the design. Use your mouse to draw a bounding box. Let's name the blockage as RB1. Let the coordinates be LLX 100, LLY 200, width be 300 microns and height be 200 microns. By default, all the layers will be checked. The routing blockage will be created in all the layers. Let's say we don't want it on M5. So you uncheck M5 and click on OK. The routing blockage will be created. Next, we will learn how to draw a simple power grid using GPS GUI. To draw the power grid, we need to first define the PGNet. For that, let's go to flow plan, define PGNets. Let's define a power net called VDD. Assign one volt to it and click on apply. Let's define a ground net VSS, assign zero voltage, make the type as ground and click on apply. Now there are two PG nets added VDD and VSS. Now we can start drawing the power grid. You can go to power grid, create route mesh. In GPS, every route mesh is represented by a spec name. Let's name the spec as RM1. We can select the nets, we select both VDD and VSS. Let's try to create a M5 vertical mesh. So you choose a layer as M5 and the direction is already vertical. The width will be 10 microns. Uh, spacing will be 40 microns. Group pitch will be 100 microns. 
So you have provided these details in the GUI. And we'll use the grid creation in the entire core area. Click on apply to get the grid created. Similarly, we will create a grid for M2 in the horizontal direction. To drop vias option and drop stack vias to the upper layer M5. And then click on apply. We have managed to create the M2 grid also. Next step is to assign some voltage sources or pad locations using the GPS GUI. Let's try to assign voltage sources in the upper left and lower right part of the design. Zoom into the upper left and then go to draw and edit option. Go to add pad location option. It will bring up our dialog box. Let's create on M5 a power pad. Click on apply and place the P-lock. Similarly, place a ground P-lock in the nearby strap. Similarly, create two P-locks at the bottom uh, right corner also. The next step is to assign some power for the design through the GPS GUI. For assigning power, we need to go to Analyze, Setup Analysis, Static and Dynamic, and Power Assignment. We will create a power spec known as PS1, and we want to assign power on the entire full chip, so we will choose the entire core area. We want to do a static analysis, so we will go to Static tab, go to Auto Populate Nets and Layers option, so it will populate the lowermost layer in the design for power assignment. We will assign 50 milliwatt and 50 milliamps on both power and ground and then click on apply. Similarly, we will go and choose the INS region option and go for region R1. Again go to static tab, auto populate layers and we will assign 10 milliwatt power and 10 milliamps current on both VDD and VSS in this region. Similarly, we will choose region R2 and assign the same power, 10 milliwatt, on R2 also. And click on apply. So now power is assigned on the full chip and on both the regions. Now that the power assignment is done, we will do an early static analysis. For doing static analysis, go to analyze, perform analysis option. Make sure that the static option is ticked. Click on next. It will show you the GSR and tickle it has created for Red Hawk. Review the GSR and tickle file. Click on apply. It will immediately launch a Red Hawk job in the background to do the static analysis. The Red Hawk job is now completed. Click on the IR button to see the IR map in Red Hawk. Both the GPS GUI and the Red Hawk GUI are tightly coupled. We can zoom in in GPS and it will zoom in to the same area in uh, Red Hawk. To get a summary of the IR drop results, go to Results Summary in GPS. It will give you various details such as grid detail, power summary, static IR summary and static EM summary also. In order to reduce the IR drop, we will try some manual grid optimization techniques. Go to Optimizer. By clicking on the clone button, we will create a clone. An exact replica of the parent design called C1 will be created. In the clone session, go to Power Grid, Create Route Mesh. You'll find the same mesh RM2 which was used for creating M2 in this clone session also. Here we will change the width to 2 microns and spacing from 4 microns to 3 microns. And click on apply. You can notice that the, the wires have been recreated and the vias also have got resized. Once you are done with the grid changes in the C1 session, go to Analyze, Perform Analysis, 
once again repeat the steps uh, look at the GSI and tickle which is created click on apply it will invoke one more retox session for the clone session also static airdrop analysis on clone session has also got completed go back to the GPS optimizer GUI and go to the results tab here you can see the results tabulated for both P and C1 sessions you can see the grid details comparison power summary comparison IR drop has decreased from 195 millivolt to 150 millivolt because of the increase in width for M2 and similarly EM results have also changed next we will try automatic grid optimization by giving a user defined drop target go to optimizer constraints tab we want to achieve a target IR drop of 150 millivolt so let's set the target IR drop percentage as 15 percentage you can also play with the layer mesh region and net constraints before running optimizer once you are done go to optimize and click on run optimizer button Once the optimizer session is complete, you can see a new session in the optimizer panel. A1 is the optimizer session. Go once more into the results tab and now you can see that the results are populated even for the A1 session. You can see that the grid details. So for M2, uh, you can see that in the C1 session, we had almost double the M2 density. But in the A1 session, M2 density has not increased much. Similarly, M5 density remained the same between P and C1 session, but in the A1 session, M5 was also modified. So this produces a better grid, reducing the signal congestion on M2. Similarly, if you're looking at the static IR drop results, our target was 150 millivolt and optimizer session was able to meet the target. Thanks a lot for listening to the GPS product presentation. In case you have any questions, please feel free to get back to us.